Now we know this distance is d1, so we would plug that in. And we know that the force, why don't you go ahead and draw the force in in your picture? You draw it in this picture. Or maybe you already did. Yeah. Right, how do we know it's to the right? Because there are two positive charges. Yeah, there. they told us that they're both positively charged, so we know that this force is to the right. So we know it's along the y-axis, not the x-axis. They decided to call this the y-axis. And let's see. And how did we decide whether this was positive or negative? Um. Oh, okay, that's right, yeah. So the point is, well, that's the convention. Notice that on the y-axis, they put the arrow pointing to the right. The convention is that's the positive direction, and we know we're going in that direction. So we know this force would be in the positive direction. So as we've been seeing, even though we're not using the r-hat equation, with our approach, it's not difficult at all to write the force as a vector. We just add that in at the end. That's a good answer for part A. Now we have a new charge, which has a charge of negative Q2. That's particle 2, and that's at a distance of 0, D2. And they want the new net force on particle 0. So for the first one, actually, I'm looking at it. And from A, it says on particle 0, D to particle 1. So that would need to be negative. So we blew it, huh? Yeah. yeah, we blew it on the first one, because we were figuring out the wrong force. We answered the wrong question. They were asking us. They were asking us for this force. It's always, we should have built a question mark in so we knew what the question was. They're asking for this. And was that positive or negative? negative? Yeah, you're right. That's a good catch. The force on charge zero is in the negative direction. Good. How do we know that's positive? Yes, it's an opposite charge and so right. towards another and so. so these will have an attractive force. So charge two is going to be attracting charge zero towards itself. The force of charge two on charge zero will be to the right. So you're right, that one's going to be positive. And then you just add the two forces. Um, just plug in the one from A. Right. Right, so we can factor out the y hat, and we have to make sure we're including the signs. So you put those signs in. All right, that's good progress. Why didn't we have to break these into components? Because they're all along the same axis. 
We didn't have to break these into components in order to add them because they were already parallel. It's only when the forces are not parallel that we have to break them into components. The key thing that would be easy to forget here is the signs, especially I don't think the problem really reminded you about the signs. So the easiest thing to mess up here, most people would just add these without putting in the signs. That's the key aspect. Notice that the signs on the charges don't tell you the signs in this formula. If you're just plugging in the signs on the charges, you might think this was negative, because Q2 is negative over here. But we're really just plugging in magnitudes here, and we're figuring out the signs separately. We're just plugging in the magnitudes of the charge, and then we figure out the signs. Good? A good way to start is, what do we want to be the net force on charge zero? What? What do we want to be the net force on charge zero? The Right. Well, what do we want it to be numerically? We want it to be 64 or 32 or negative pi. What do we want the charge, the net force on charge zero to be in part C? Zero. Right. So this is the place to start. We should start by taking the information we're given, that there's zero net force. And now, what can we plug in for the net force? Well, now we can plug in this big expression. Negative k, q0, q1, over d1 squared, plus k, q0, q2, so we shouldn't ignore the signs. We need to include the signs here in our expression for net force. When they said they wanted the net force to be 0, that means they want this complicated expression to come out to be 0. And now we have some algebra to slog through. So how can we start simplifying this algebraically? What's the question asking us for? Uh, the ratio of g1 to d2. That means we need to get this ratio by itself in the equation. Can you think of anything we can do to start simplifying this? Um. Can we factor out? Um, um, can we put one equation on one side? One fraction on one side and one on the other. That, I think, is the very best thing to do here. Let's do that. negative on the right. So let's multiply both sides by negative 1. What would you get if you multiply both sides by negative 1? Anytime you have a negative on both sides, you can get rid of that by multiplying both sides by negative 1. Well, I'm just yeah. thinking because if we want to ratio of d1 to d2, mm -hmm. then if I do the other side, mm -hmm. 
And then I would be multiplying by d1 eventually, so that I would have d1 on top first. Okay. But I don't think that matters. I can just put that again. That's true. Okay, good. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by D2 here. Good. 